Hello, good afternoon everybody. This is your buddy Chopadong. Time for a little Chop Talk. We haven't done this in a while, and I've never done it on FanDuel uh, on video for you guys. We're going to build some lineups today. We're going to build some NHL lineups. It's a little bit late to really make this information actionable, which is great because it goes against what I try to do. I don't try to give lineups. I'm not a lineup seller. I'm not a lineup provider. I am a coach and contributor inside DFSArmy.com, and I refuse to build your lineups for you. Uh, what I would rather do is teach you how to build lineups yourself. I'm looking for people that want to take pride in their work and want to learn how to play DFS fundamentally sound, not just stick their hand out or open their mouths and hope somebody drops money into it. To me, that's lazy, and it's absolutely it, it borders on shameful. And I know that people are busy and people don't have time, and that's why we try to do a lot of the work for you inside DFS Army and cut that research down and provide you some of the better plays of the day, better places to focus. But what a lot of people don't see is how uh, to actually build those lineups, how to construct those lineups. I'm dealing with a couple of guys right now that are relatively new to NHL, and so I'm making this video more for them, but I want to share it with everybody because I tend to be a little bit of an open book. Um, when we're building lineups, one way we do this is bottom up. Bottom up means we're going to start with our value first. You have to find the value to start with the value, and then we start filling in around that. We're going to quickly scan the slate. We're going to look for our offenses we would like to target. We have 12 games to pick from tonight, so there's no shortage of great plays. And then what we're going to do from there is load our value in first, and then we're going to start fitting, mixing, and matching, and then we will start loading in the talent. So um, that's just one way to do it. It's a lot more fun because at the top of the lineup, you're picking from studs. You're not picking from punts where you're sitting there going, God, this guy sucks and this guy sucks. Which one can I? No, no, no. We don't do that. We've already locked in a couple of guys that we're okay with, and then we're going to go from there. So easiest thing to do. Go to the starting lineups page, and we're going to scroll down. We're going to say Carolina and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's scheduled to score some uh, points, some goals tonight. Minus 160 favorite. That's okay. I know that the Carolina top line gives up points, so that puts these two lines in good spots. They're on, the, they're on uh, I guess, on the radar. Uh, New Jersey won't have Taylor Hall again tonight. I, Boston's hotter than hot. Any of these two lines, fine. Goalie, Tuka Rask is expensive, but he's obviously there. We can pair him up with some of the defensemen if we want to. Uh, Philadelphia has been on a little bit of a downswang here lately, but they go up against Detroit uh, playing on a back-to-back -back night. Uh, Mrazek, I can't believe he's getting the start. But anyway, uh, this, this is a, a good two-way game, perhaps. We'll see how that one ends up working out because Philly – uh, scores a lot with their top line. Uh, you got Simmons down here, and you got two great defensemen in Gusta, Gustavier and uh, Provorov. And then on the Detroit side, the Philly line, the top line, gives up goals. So that puts these guys in a good spot, depending on how they match up. And then here's a value play right here at uh, Bertuzzi. We're going to like to see that, probably use that quite a bit. Uh, Colorado-Montreal, not really excited about that game. A lot of people will be on the Colorado game, but they're on the road. They're playing a back-to-back. -back. I don't see it. Uh, Ottawa and the St. Louis Blues. The Blues are in an okay spot because Ottawa tends to give up a lot of goals on their top line or two. That puts these two lines in a good spot, but I don't really trust the Blues, to be quite honest with you. Carter Hutton's in play at 8.3K. Uh, Tampa Bay has been on a little bit of a, a downswing lately as well. Uh, the second line has cooled off. In fact, they've shuffled their lines around. Not a big fan of, uh, I'm kind of on a wait and see approach with them. Nashville, their top three scorers are their defensemen. So even though uh, Saros is an okay GPP pick, I, I should show you their game logs and show you that he's either a shutout or he gives up a couple. Um, if he happens to shut out Tampa Bay on road back to backs tonight, then, you know, I mean, you've really got something for GPPs and he's relatively inexpensive. Uh, Florida Panthers, Dallas Stars, this game could shoot out as well. And you've got yourself a couple of good value plays in here. And, of course, you've got yourself a consistent player in Klingberg. Um, you got some stuff in here that you can kind of play with. But this top line is generally the one doing the damage. Buffalo sucks on the road. Uh, Edmonton sucks, period. So it just kind of is what it is. Although, for some reason, I don't. This 230 speaks to me. This Vegas minus 230. The 3.39 is bullshit. It's a factor of how big this spread is. It doesn't mean they're going to score three and a half goals. Uh, they might, but they probably they, they probably shouldn't. Um, they're not that good. But either way, the minus 233 suggests they should win the game. I don't mind Talbot as cheap as he is to pick up maybe a cheap win. Uh, we'll see how that works. I don't see any of the skaters being viable. Columbus and Vegas. Vegas is a stud team. 
New York and Anaheim, that's at home. That's a lower-scoring game. Should be a lower-scoring game. There is a, Vegas is, is a spewtard when it comes to defense as well, and so that puts Columbus in a good spot. So we need to pay attention to them. Uh, maybe some guys like a... Uh, you know, Trevor Lewis down here at 3.5K is playable. Um, well, let's go back up to Ottawa for a second because I saw something there that I didn't, I should have pointed out. They're playing the Blues, and this guy, uh, this D Domenico is league minimum 3K on FanDuel, and that's a great little value pick. He got 14 points his last game up. If he gets you six points, he's fine. If he gets you two points, he doesn't burn you at 3K. Uh, and it allows other things to happen that we're reaching for tonight. So uh, let's see, last couple of games, uh, Kings, Vancouver. Vancouver's at home, tends to slow the game down. Backup goalie's okay, but I don't see the Kings really scoring a lot of points. I do like a one-off here out of Trevor Lewis, and that's about it. Over here, this game could have some fireworks to it. San Jose's been giving up goals lately, especially their one, and then their defensive pairing down here of uh, Braun and Vlasic have been giving up uh, a lot of goals. So that puts the uh, Winnipeg one in a good spot. The two, a little bit. You've got some hot guys. Perot's hot. Uh, Armia's always a value play at 3.8 until he uh, either, he's not really hot right now, but he's a solid source of, say, 9, 10 points, which helps. And down in here, you know, you've got a couple of guys that you might play in San Jose. So now that we kind of have an idea of where to target up and down the slate, that's not a real thorough slate breakdown, but it does help. We're going to pay attention to correlation, and we're going to go digging for the value. The way we dig for values, we come here to the NHL tab on Rotor Grinders, click More Research Tools, Skater Stats, and of course, while it loads, I get to either sing you a song, or maybe we just kind of think about what we're going to be doing for dinner. Uh, I sort by four weeks. I can sort by a week. I can sort by the season, whatever I want to do. When it shifts over, I take the uh, the filters, and I can pick any individual team that I want, or I can just run it as is. I'm looking for deep value right now. So what I want to do is I want to sort that by salary, drop these guys down to, say, under 4.5K on FanDuel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort them by salary. I'm going to open up all of them, and I should run the gamut from 4.5K all the way down to the minimum, guys. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start digging. There was a green one. I don't mind seeing the colors. 10 points, D'Angelo, two games. You know, uh, there's the DeMonico guy. So you might put him in as a wing, and you scroll up here a little bit. Nine points here, Amato. Um, sometimes you got to check where some of these guys are playing and where they're coming from. Uh, Suter might be a play. Uh, there's Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi, Trevor Lewis, Demonic, D. D Demonico, whatever, are kind of where I seem to be going tonight. There's Trevor Lewis in a good spot at 3.5K. So we're finding some value. If I keep looking for some defensemen, maybe, because I may need some defensive value. Uh, Lowry's hurt. Uh, scrolling up, scrolling up. We're still in the 3.5K range. Uh, let's see. There's a couple down here. Uh, Ian Coles hurt. Andrew McDonald, no. Let's see. Tierney's a punt play out of San Jose. I haven't used a lot of him. Vince Dunn, no. Uh, Nemeth in, in Colorado, not terrible. Uh, da, 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 da. Just kind of looking for more for defensemen. If I really wanted to cut the cut the crap out of here, I can just open up the defenseman. And then I can just resort by salary. And now we can go digging again. Click open all. Let's find some value defensemen. I already have my mind set on a couple of them, to be honest with you. But as I scroll up here, sorry for making you dizzy. Uh, Colin McDonald again. So now we are where we left off before when we decided to cut to the chase. Vince Dunn again. No. Um, Petrie, it's not bad. Petrie, uh, Vlasic isn't bad, but here's the thing about Vlasic. You want to now check if you see a guy you like, you want to check his game log. Let's see if he's running hot. Look at this. Here's what I'm seeing. You're going to see this and you're going to lick your chops. I'm going to tell you it's inconsistent at best. Um, big game, big game, big game. I don't know if I'm going to get 20 out of him or if I'm going to get eight. So he's not really cash safe. He's a great tournament play. Not really cash safe. I'm looking for my punt plays to be a little more consistent than that, even though for 4.2K, you know, nine points, that's fine. It's not a big deal. Uh, Nurse and Edmonton. Well, maybe there's an Edmonton guy at Ristolainen. 
So these are your cheaper guys. It doesn't look like there's a lot of cheap guys on the slate tonight. We may have to pay up. So let's dig in with what we know. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to target our goalie. And let's come all the way down. Who is the cheapest goalie I would be willing to run and be okay with it? Talbot. Who is my cheapest defense defensive player I'd be willing to run? And be okay with it. I know there's nobody down here in this cheap range because we just did some searching. I'm going to have to start at, say, you know, into the 4,800 range. So Ristolainen, I wasn't happy with him. Clefbin, Perico. Uh, Ryan Ellis wouldn't be bad. It's on the first line, and he's scoring points. Eric Johnson wouldn't be bad. Biff Treba isn't bad. The one I was really trying to get up to, to be quite honest with you, Oprovrov wouldn't be bad. There's Edler at 5k. I want to show you his game log here really quick. Took a nosedive yesterday. But if you followed my write-up out on uh, Twitter and inside DFSArmy.com, you would notice that I mentioned how many double-digit games the guy has. It goes all the way back to Christmas. Double-digit games like crazy. He's as consistent as they come. So really and truly, I would prefer him, say, even over Ellis. And this might be where I start with my value. Now, the other ones that we already knew about Who'd we say? Trevor Lewis, right? Bertuzzi. What I'm doing is I'm plugging in my value plays so that I can pump my average salary per player up. I've got $7,600 to work with. I'd be comfortable with these two guys. I might want one of these. So let's see what happens. Let's say I want Boston. Let's say I like the Boston line and I like that top line in Boston. So I would run Bergeron, Marchon. And Pasternak. And boom, I've got a top line stack and 6,800 left for a center. If I want to take out, say, Trevor Lewis and leave Bertuzzi in there, I can correlate a center and a wing. Let's say I wanted to go to Vegas and take their top two. Is that Marcia Shaw and Carlson? I can't quite get Carlson. It's a little too expensive. If so, it's going to cost me Boston. So maybe instead of Boston here, the one, maybe I get rid of Pasternak, and now maybe I can take Marsha Carlson, and now I got 4,200 left at the wing. Who did we like around that 4,200 range? Uh, Tuck, not terrible. Calvert, Schroeder. Nope, that's in the same game, sorry. Oops. If I go to all games and I go to the wing and I scroll down to 4,200, I'm really only picking one because I'm happy with everybody else. Erickson, Favari, Janmark's not bad. Gabrick, Timo Meyer. It's another punt. Boom, done. And now what have I got? I've got Boston, Boston, the top line. Vegas, Vegas, top line. A one-off in Detroit. A one-off in San Jose. And then... You know, a couple of one-off defensemen and 100 bucks left to spend. Let's say I wanted to start off with Tuka Rask. Now I got to really dig for some value, don't I? So let's start with the same guys. Let's go with Edler. Let's go with Ellis. Let's leave that be. Now let's start looking for, let's use... Armia, Bertuzzi, Lewis. I mean, we're at 8,400 for three guys. Now, I'm not going to run all of these punts in my lineup, but what I'm going to do, let's say I wanted to run into Pittsburgh tonight and pick up Malkin. I guess it was Gensel's who I was looking at before. No, it's Hornquist. Say I wanted to pick them up. Why? Because when you look up here at Pittsburgh, Malkin and Hornquist are on the same line. They're both on the power play one. They give me exposure to Sidney Crosby on the power play in case one of them gets hot tonight. I got 10-7 left for centers. Hello, that's anybody I want. So who else might I want to do? Let's say that I like uh, Philadelphia tonight. So I come down here and I pick up uh, Couturier. And now I've got 3,300 left for one of my punts. If I want to take off, say, Armia, now who can I get out of that Philly game to correlate with Quatria? Garou, 
Not quite. I'm close. Well, that's easy enough. If I want to do him, I punch him in there. I take out Rask and go settle up with a smaller, with a little bit cheaper goalie. Um, let's say I wanted to come down here and grab. Voracek, no, let's say, uh, where's Kocheny, Konechny, whatever. I mean, that's an easy correlation with Couturier, right? And I have 2,700 left over. I can take out another punt. Say I take out Tyler Bertuzzi, and I want to run, can I get Simmons in there for, bang. There's another line, Couturier, Konechny, Simmons. Watch this, in Philly. Konechny, Couturier on the top line, they correlate well. They give you access to Garo if he has a big game. Simmons down here on the power play one correlates with these two guys. Done deal. And you saw what we did here in the Pittsburgh game. So it's just another way to go. Let's say this is just easier than starting you know, with stacks. And let's say that I, I, I wanted to go with you know, Flurry tonight. And now um, I really like the stack the Boston stack. But let's say I'm going to get sneaky and I'm not going to do the Boston one. I'm going to do the Boston two. So I come down here and I take Krejci. Spooner. And DeBrusque. Very affordable. So that's one way to go. Now I can come in here to Dallas, say. And I like uh, Sagan, rattle off, and then of course Klingberg. I'm still not hurting. I got two left to go, because I took the line, the second line out of Boston, right? That 5100, that's okay. At 5100, I can probably pick up a couple of one-offs. I mean, there's. Uh, let's see if I wanted to run Petri. Cheap guy gives me 6,100 left at the wing. So when I scroll down here, see what I'm doing? I'm buying this average player down so that I can then pick Landeskog, Ehlers, Simmons again, Perron. There's your Vegas. Just run Perron as a one-off. That's okay. No big deal. So this is just a few ways to build these lines, and you make sure they're correlated. You make sure you always have plenty of money left over. And you just rock and roll. And when you get a couple of lines that you like, you start jamming them into contests. These are all fundamentally sound. They're all correlated. They're all offenses in good spots. We already identified that. But it all started by finding your value first. You find your value first. Now you know where to go. You load those guys into your lineups, and then you start working up from there. That way you're choosing from your top stack. You're choosing from you know, your stud players at the top. You don't start at the top and say, let's see, I really like... Um, line A and, uh, and, and Wheeler tonight. So I'm going to start there. And now I'm going to go over here to Pittsburgh and Crosby. And, well, that's just a one-off. So I'll go to Boston. And I'll pick up uh, maybe, maybe I'll pick up uh, Marshawn. And Pasternak, because I got the top line there. Now, look, you're screwed. You're under $4,000, and you've got four spots left. The Philly haven't even touched your goalie yet. And now you're panicked, because you're married to these guys, because they're all studs. And now you don't know where to look anymore down here. You basically built this lineup from the top down, as opposed to the bottom up. And that's what you should be focused on. Give yourself room and flexibility in your salary. If this is the type of teaching and the type of stuff that you guys like, you need to become a VIP member inside DFSArmy.com. Follow the link in the description in this tab, and let's let's get to talking. Let's get to teaching. I'm working with guys all the time that are you know asking these questions, and it's just the fundamentals, man. It's just how you build competitive lineups. Hockey's a volatile sport, and it's just the way that it is. A lot of nights we lose. Some nights we win. But it doesn't mean you can't become a better player by learning the fundamentals of how to build a, a solid lineup, how to choose the right contests, how to budget your money appropriately for a volatile sport like hockey. If those are questions you have, we need to talk. So you need to hop yourself in to DFSArmy.com, become a VIP, let us coach you, let us help you, let us teach you how to become a more competitive player.
And I promise you, you're going to see bang for your buck. We've got every sport covered. We've got coaches in every single sport. We've got guys that are experienced that have been teaching for a couple of years now and helping many, many, many players get better. That's why we're growing. As a bonus, let me throw a coupon code at you, CHOP, C-H-O-P. That coupon code entitles you to 10% off, grandfathered in for the lifetime of your membership. I just had a guy contact me about baseball. Said he was a baseball member last year, and he let his membership go. Can he get the discount that he had last year? No. It doesn't work that way. You let go of the membership, you got to come back in at full price. And I'm telling you, next year, uh, when NFL starts up, we will not be 40 bucks a month. Take the $35 after the coupon code CHOP, C-H-O-P, and never look back. We're always adding tools. We're always adding contributors. We're always adding more. We're growing. We're adding more community members. And our regulars, our members, have been members for years. Some of these guys are phenomenal DFS players. They can help you too. Give us a shot. Jump in dfsarmy.com. Tell them CHOP sent you, C-H-O-P. And we'll talk to you when we talk to you.